Hi everyone, this is Mrs. G.A. and today we're going to review rational expressions. Okay, so a rational expression is just a fractional expression where both the numerators and denominators are polynomials. Um, you do need to be careful um, when you're working with rational functions um, because oftentimes our domain uh, which again is the valid x values will be or will have some restrictions and um, that goes back to our most basic rule about fractions that the denominator cannot equal zero. So just keep in mind anytime you're working with a rational um, function or equation, um, make sure you check your domain. All right, we're going to do a quick review of our rules for operations with fractions, and then we're going to see if we can apply these rules to our more complex rational expressions. So, of course, we know for simplifying, um, our job is to look for common factors within the numerator and denominator. So if you have AB over AC, that would leave us with B over C um, when simplified. So just make sure to factor the numerator and denominator first and then look for common factors. Um, to add and subtract, hopefully we all remember that you need to have a common denominator before you add um, two uh, fractions or subtract. Um, once you have a common denominator, you just add or subtract across the numerator. So this would be A plus C over B, um, noting that our denominator remains B. And of course, um, multiplication and division, pretty straightforward. Um, for multiplying, we multiply across the numerator, so AC and across the denominator. And then hopefully you remember the rule for dividing fractions. Um, our first uh, fraction will say the same, and then we are actually going to multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So notice that um, C over D became D over C, and then we use our rule for multiplying. So AD over BC. Okay, now we're going to try using these same rules with our rational expressions. All right, so here um, we're just simplifying. So notice um, in all of these examples, there will be no equal sign. We're not solving. We're simply simplifying and performing operations. Um, so let's start by factoring. So in the numerator, we can use difference of two squares. And in the denominator, uh, we can factor that trinomial pretty easily. And now our job is to look for common factors. So you can see that there's a common factor of x minus 8. So those will um, cancel out. And we are left with x plus 8 over x plus 9. Um, as I talked about with these um, domain restrictions, I am going to ask you to list what x cannot be. And in order to do that, we're going to look right here. Um, we do need to include um, factors that did cancel out even if they're no longer in our final answer. So here since our denominator can't equal 0 I know that x cannot equal oops, negative 9 and x cannot equal positive 8. A little trick for that of course is to pretty much do zero product property um, in your denominator except say x plus 9 cannot equal 0, so x cannot equal negative 9, and you can do the same for this factor. So please make sure to list your restrictions. All right, let's try another example together. So you can see in this problem, we're going to be dividing, um, but just like the last example, we're always going to start by factoring our numerator and denominator. So here we have x minus 5, and we can use difference of two squares again. And then we can say divided by um, x minus 5 times x plus 3 over x plus 7 times x plus 4. Now remember our rule for dividing, uh, we're actually going to multiply by the reciprocal. So essentially these are going to flip and then I'm going to multiply straight across. So we have x minus 5, I'm just going to combine it all into 1 times x plus 7 times x plus 4. So you can see that these two factors ended up in the numerator. And I'm going to do the same across the denominator. x plus 4, x minus 4 times x minus 5 times x plus 3. 
And then our job from here is going to be to find common um, factors to cancel out. So you can see we have a common factor of x minus 5. We have a common factor of x plus 4. And that leaves us with our final answer of this. Now, of course, we do need to list our restrictions. So I'm going to go from here, and I'm also going to take into consideration anything that was in my denominator. So we can see that x cannot equal. So I'm going to go across here. So we have negative 4, positive 4, positive 5, negative 3. And we want to be extra thorough, so let's also say that x cannot equal negative 7. So these are all of our restrictions. All right, let's do another example. Um, here we are subtracting two fractions. Um, so again, just like the last two examples, we're always going to start by um, factoring whenever we can. So here, let's factor our, or our denominator. And we have minus 2 times x plus 1 squared, or of course you can write that as x plus 1 times x plus 1. So remember, um, in order for us to combine two fractions, um, we need to make sure that our denominators are the same, and clearly they're not. So on the side, I'm going to write out what the LCD is. So I can see that our LCD is x plus 1 squared times x minus 1. So you'll notice that I included x plus 1 squared um, because it needs to cover this one. And the x plus 1 squared co covers this x plus 1. And then this came from our first um, fraction. So now I need to look at my two denominators and see what's missing so I can um, change the fraction. So in here, I have x plus 1, x minus 1. I am missing a power of x plus 1. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by x plus 1. And then um, my second fraction, I can see that I'm missing x minus 1. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by x minus 1. And now I can um, combine my two fractions. So my uh, fraction is just going to have a denominator of x plus 1 squared over x times x minus 1. And now I can combine my numerators. So we have um, x plus 1 minus 2 times x plus 1. So we, now we have a single fraction, and all we need to do is combine in the uh, numerator. So we have x plus 1 minus 2x plus 2. Be careful that you are distributing the negative. And then that leaves us with negative x plus 3 over x plus 1 squared times x minus 1. Now, of course, here we're going to do the same thing and list our restrictions. So x cannot be negative 1 or positive 1. Okay, go ahead and pause the video at this point and give this problem a try. Okay, go ahead and check your work here. Um, so uh, first thing I did was factor. Then I made sure to find my LCD and multiply my fractions by the factors that are missing. Uh, once I have a common denominator, you can combine the two fractions and simplify in the numerator. Um, again, we are going to want to list our restrictions. So from here, I can see that x cannot equal positive 4, negative 2, and positive 1. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is talk about how to simplify a complex rational expression, which is essentially a fraction that has fractions within the numerator and or denominator. Um, so there's two ways you can go about this. Um, the first method, which is typically going to be the easier way to go, is to multiply the um, numerator and denominator by your LCD. So that means every single term within the numerator and denominator are multiplied by that LCD. That should clear your tiny fractions, allowing you to simplify the rest pretty easily. Method two um, is to combine the fractions that are within your numerator and denominator, and then you can um, continue simplifying from there. 
So I'm going to show you how to use um, each method, and then you can decide what works best for you or maybe for that individual problem. So here you can see that we have a complex rational expression, and I'm going to do method one. I'm going to multiply by the LCD. So I can see in this problem that my LCD is XY, and I'm talking about the least common denominator of my individual term. So I have an X here and a Y here. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to multiply every term in the numerator and denominator by xy. And I like to actually go in and write it next to every single term just so I don't forget anything. So you can see in this first term, my y's cancel out and I'm left with x squared. And then I have plus xy over xy minus. Here my x terms um, cancel out and I'm left with y squared. So you can see in one step, I've managed to go from a complex rational expression to just a rational expression. And then from here, we're going to want to see if we can simplify. Um, so I'm going to factor using GCF. And we are left with this as our final simplified answer. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to use um, the other method. Um, again, an idea that you might want to try method two is that all three denominators um, within my larger rational expression are different. A plus H is a denominator, A is a denominator, and H is a denominator. So the LCD is a little bit more complex here. So I'm gonna try combining the two fractions that are within my numerator. And of course, to divide, we do need to create a common um, denominator. So I'm going to multiply this first fraction by a over a and my second fraction by a plus h over a plus h. And that will leave me with a minus a plus h over a times a plus h. Um, so that allowed me to combine these two into one and then all over h. I'm going to simplify what I see um, in my numerator here before I continue. So this leaves me with a minus a minus h, so negative h over a times a plus h over h. Um, now, a little trick that I like to use um, when I'm dividing two fractions, um, I call it the double rainbow method. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn um, this into a fraction as well. So you can see that I have my fraction on top and my fraction on the bottom. This is just a way to multiply by the reciprocal without have, having to rewrite your problem. So these two terms are going to get combined and these two terms are going to get combined. So these will end up in your numerator. Negative h times 1 is negative h. And these multiplied will end up in your denominator. So we're left with a h a plus h. So essentially this is just a shortcut again for multiplying by the reciprocal. So you just don't need to rewrite it. You can kind of do it in one step. And now of course I'm going to um, end by simplifying. I do see a common factor of h, so I'm going to cancel it out. I'm left with negative 1 over a times a plus h. I do want to remind you that um, if a factor cancels out and you're, you're left with what looks to be nothing in your numerator, there's actually a 1 there. And this is our final answer. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can give uh, these two examples a try. Um, maybe try method 1 for example A and method 2 for example B, just for practice. Okay, let's check our answers here. Um, so you can see that I multiplied everything by my LCD UV here, simplified, um, and factored to simplify at the end. And for example B, I combined the two fractions in my numerator, I simplified, and I multiplied by the reciprocal. Um, there were a few terms that canceled out, and I was able to simplify at the end, but here is my final answer. All right, that is all for today's lesson. Thank you so much for watching.